Welcome everybody to TechCraft, this is Rob, and in today's video, I'm gonna talk you through how you can make your own custom widgets directly on your iPad or your iPhone. Let's go. So there are plenty of apps on the App Store that you can use to create widgets, things like Widgie and Widget Smith, and these are great apps, don't get me wrong, but they are sort of limited in what you can do. You, you can make variations on the initial set of themes that the creators of those apps conceived. You can't really go beyond that. You can't do anything more complicated. There are other apps like Scriptable, which is the app that we'll use today, that give you basically full power over what you want to put in your widget, when you want to change it, what kind of logic goes into calculating what's displayed. And using this, you can build some quite complex widgets. So Scriptable is a tool that's primarily focused on automation and it uses the JavaScript programming language for you to write those automation scripts and you can do a whole bunch of cool tasks on your iPhone and your iPad with it. But it also has a feature for creating custom widgets, also using JavaScript. Now, caveat, there is a little bit of programming here, but you can do it directly on your iPad or your iPhone. I'm not an expert in the JavaScript language. If you are and you see anything wrong in my JavaScript, please do comment. I'm happy to find out any changes. But if you're coming at this new and you're not really a programmer, I wouldn't really worry. This is quite simple. There's some basic patterns you can follow and you'll very quickly pick it up. It's, it's not super hard um, and you can build something really powerful. We're going to build four widgets today, a Hello YouTube widget that just shows how to lay out widgets with text and background colors and so forth, an XKCD widget that shows how to pull information from the internet. We'll build this widget, which uses information from the calendar app to tell me when my next household garbage collection is and whether it's recycling or household waste. And then finally, we'll build this widget, which shows statistics from my Pi-hole ad blocker. This one shows a lot more complex layout. Here I am on my iPad, and we're going to start by building this Hello World, Hello YouTube widget. We're going to build all four of these widgets today. And we'll do this by first opening up Scriptable. Here we are inside Scriptable. You can download this off the App Store. I'll put the price... Uh, on the screen now, I can't remember how much it is uh, offhand. And you can see I've already got my widgets here, but we're going to rebuild them. So we'll first start by building the Hello YouTube widget. So let's press the plus icon here to create a new script. So here we've got our script, and I'm going to start just by showing you how to bring up the documentation, because that's the most important thing. You can click on the documentation icon down here in the bottom left, and this shows you all of the different bits of code libraries you can use in your widget. And the one we're most interested to start with is this list widget. This actually shows us how to show a widget on screen. Um, you can read through this. It's, it's a handy exercise to read through all the documentation, just get a feel for what you can do. Um, you can also, at any point in time, bring up the documentation by pressing Command and D, and that brings up the documentation browser. Right, let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is get hold of a widget variable. Um, so we're going to use const in JavaScript. That just describes a variable that can't be changed, a widget. And then that's the name of the variable. And then we're going to create a new list widget. Okay. So even if you don't really understand coding, you might understand what's happening here. We're kind of creating in memory this idea of a widget. And we're just going to present that. So we'll say widget.present medium, say, to get the medium size widget. And this is going to give us a preview of the widget inside Scriptable without having to keep switching backwards and forwards to the, uh, the desktop. So if we press play down in the bottom corner, there we've got kind of a blank <laughs> white widget. Fantastic. Um, now, there's a little bit of ceremony you need to do for every widget. I want to just get that out of the way to begin with this. The double slash, by the way, is a comment. So this means that this line is just kind of ignored by JavaScript. It just allows us to write some exposition. This is just for preview. To actually display the widget on the desktop, we need to do two things. So we need to call script.setWidget. So this is saying the output of this script is actually this widget. And then we, by convention, you don't need to do this, but you should do call script complete. And that just signals I'm basically done with my processing now. We can still preview inside the app by pressing the play button or alternatively by pressing command and R, which is quite nice. Um, we can now though put this on the desktop. Before we do anything else, let me show you how you put these widgets onto the desktop. So here I am back on my desktop and I've already got some widgets on here, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna long press to get into jiggle mode and press the plus in the top left corner. And I'm gonna, search in widgets for scriptable okay i'm going to choose the medium size widget from run script and press add and that's put a new widget on the on the desktop here um, let's just drag that over to another screen so we get a clean screen and then if you tap on it you can choose which script and our script was called untitled script uh fantastic and 
press done. And there's our blank widget now on the desktop. And as we change it, we'll see the changes on the desktop. Fantastic. So we can go back into Scriptable and start actually making that widget useful. So the first thing I want to do is I want to set the color of the background to red. And we can do this quite simply by going to widget dot background color, spelled in the uh, American style, and you can get a list of pre-built colors from the color module. And I'll show you where you see this. Uh, you can just sort of search in the documentation for color and see, ah, oh, okay, there's loads of interesting colors here, like blue and so forth. But we're gonna take the, the red color um, and just make that our background. And if we press Command R, now we've got a red widget. So now the background is red, I want to add some text to the widget. And this is fairly simple. So we'll start by saying const text like we did when we created the widget. And we need to create some text. And we're not gonna do this by doing something like new text. That's not the, the case here. Instead, we're gonna ask the widget to add the text. Uh, and we're gonna say, we want to say like, add hello YouTube, like that. And that is gonna add the text to the widget and we can press play and see what happens. Pretty boring, right? Just some black text in the, in the corner there. We want to make it bigger, maybe make it white, maybe center align it. We can do all those things. So let's start first by making it bigger. To do that, we're going to set the font. So we do text.font, and there are many fonts you can get. Similar to the way we did with color, when we did color.red, we can do font.system font, and we can pass in the size. So let's maybe choose 24, see what that looks like. Okay, that's, that's a decent size, but maybe we make it a little bit bigger. Let's say 36. Okay, cool. So now we've got a bigger font. Maybe we want to change the color. How do we do that? Well, you might be surprised. Uh, you might not be surprised, rather, to see that we can do text dot text color like we did widget dot background color and there is indeed a color dot white fantastic okay this is starting to look you know reasonable uh, i'm not a designer in case you didn't notice now i want to do something a little bit nicer i want to maybe make the text centered and i maybe want to give it a small drop shadow and we can do all those things let's start by center aligning it by just calling text dot center align text and pressing run and I just want to emphasize again, I don't know these things in advance. I just read the documentation or do a search on, the, on Google to find out the answers to certain things. That's mostly what programming really is. Right, so the text is central line. Let's give it a drop shadow. This is a little bit more complicated. We have to call a few more lines through this, but it's a nice little effect. So we'll first start by saying like we want the text shadow color to be, let's say, black. Oops, not black. And I want the shadow radius uh, to be, let's say five to begin with, and we can play around with that. And then we have to choose the offset of the shadow from the actual text itself. So offset, and we need to pass in sort of an X, Y or point offset. So we'll do two by two. It's gonna be set off two on the X axis and two on the Y axis from the text. And let's play that. And you can see there's a subtle shadow there, but what I want to do is just maybe make it like, bit more um, opposite of that, a bit more pronounced. Let's put these a bit further out. And you can see that that looks ridiculous, but you can see it, it's sort of dropped down. And you can play around with this to get it exactly as you like, um, but that looks okay. To finish this off, to finish kind of this, this, this little section on getting the widget looking nice, let's maybe make the background into a gradient. So to do this, we're gonna come up here, we're gonna, we're gonna take this line out, I'm just gonna comment it out temporarily. You can delete it if you want, but it's nice to have it there. And I'm going to create a linear gradient object that we're gonna set as the background. So we'll just call that G, a new linear gradient. And we need to set two things here. We need to set what colors we want, and then sort of where in the gradient do they appear. So we'll start by setting the colors. And these square brackets signify like a list or an array, so it's more than one thing um, in JavaScript. But I'm sort of aligning over the details a little bit here. The first color will be color.red. Um, and then we could just do color.white maybe to see what it looks like. You can play around with this. And then where do we want these to be? The locations of them. Um, let's put red at the start, which is zero. And let's put white at the end, which is one and we'll just do a sort of steady gradient. And now to set that gradient as the background for our widget, we'll just say widget dot background gradient rather than background color, and we'll set that to G. So I would recap this is a little bit more complicated. Create the linear gradient, gradient object. This is just the thing that describes the gradient. Set what colors you want in the gradient. 
set where on the spectrum of that gradient you want those colors to kick in. And this is more relevant if you have more colors. And then just maybe tell the widget, this is your background gradient. Let's play that and see what happens. So now you see I've got this kind of like nice, nice gradient from red to white. We might want to say do red to blue. And we can just change that here and run that. That looks okay, I guess, if those are your color schemes. But you can play around with the colors as much as you want. If we go back to the desktop now, we'll see that this widget is now live on there. And here I am on my desktop with my snazzy new gradient widget. So that's quite a basic example of just constructing a widget with some text and some colors on it. Let's see how we can build a widget that pulls information from the internet and displays that, in that information. We're gonna build the XKCD widget that shows the latest comic. We're back in Scriptable and I've got a, a blank script and I'm just gonna tap on the title to give it a nice name. We'll just call that XKCD YT and rename that just makes it easier when you're picking the script to run. And okay, let's start by doing the basics. We need a widget, a new list widget. I'm gonna display this, I think in extra large. So we'll do widget dot uh, present extra large, I think is the call. We can press that. Yep, so that's right. Um, do the little bit of ceremony that we need. Script dot set widget widget script complete. Okay. So those are the, the basics. Now we need to start thinking about how do we pull the information from XKCD and then render an image in the widget. Let's break that down and let's just look first at getting that information from XKCD. So XKCD is quite nice. They have an API, an application programming interface that gives you all the data about their latest comic. If you're not familiar with the, the idea of an API, think of this as a way for programmers to talk to each other. A program makes available some data and another program consumes it. In this case, XKCD server is making available the data about the latest comic and our widget is a program that's gonna consume that. It's actually a lot simpler than it sounds. So let's start by creating a web request, a request to that, that API. So we'll do cons request equals new request. We can get the the URL, the endpoint for this request from the XKCD website. I'm just gonna copy that in here. That's the URL. And one thing we can do is we can do a little bit of debugging here. So we can use console.log and we can just log the request object to see what it looks like. And if we press, I'm gonna just temporarily comment out the display and we'll press run. And then down here, this little one has appeared in the bottom corner. I'm gonna press on that and you can see some output and this is telling us what's going to happen this is the request that's going to happen we really want to see the result of the data so let's get the data back and to do that we'll do uh, const res result equals request dot load json and json stands for javascript object notation it's a particular data format that's very commonly used for these application programming interfaces and it's so common in fact you don't need to worry about it it's kind of built into things like scriptable so we're just going to get the result, and this time we're going to log the result and press play. And we get back an empty result. So why is it returning an empty value? Well, this is a nuance of JavaScript, and it's probably the most confusing part about the whole using JavaScript to build widgets thing. So if you can get this, you're absolutely fine. In JavaScript, when you make a call to the internet or do something that takes a lot of time, it returns what's called a promise. And think about this just like a handle to the data that's about to come back. What we're seeing here is the handle. We're not seeing the data. To get the actual data, we need to tell JavaScript, please wait for the data to finish. Please wait for the promise to finish. And we do that by passing in a wait here or pressing a wait. Please wait for that promise to be fulfilled. If you can get your head around this, uh, you'll be absolutely fine. Don't worry if you can't. This is still confusing people who do this professionally to this day. Okay, so now we're gonna log that and we've actually got the data back. And even if you don't understand JSON, you'll probably kind of get a sense for it. It's almost like key value pairs. So news is empty, transcript is empty, image is this link, and that's what we want to get out. Alt is the alt text. Maybe we'll do something with that. It tells you like when it was published and so forth. Okay, now we need to start pulling this data apart and using it to render the image. Well, the first thing we can do is actually get the image URL. So let's do const image URL. And to get that, we can rely on the fact that the JSON is easily accessible and we can get IMG, which corresponds to this key here in the data. Um, and let's just log that out so you see what happens, IMG URL. There we go, so we've got the URL of the image now. Now we just need to display it inside the widget. So to do that, we're gonna make another request to 
XKCD, this time for the image, and we're going to use new request using the image URL. Oops. And we want to get the data back as an image. Um, so we'll do const img equals image request dot load image this time. And I'm sure you can already spot the bug there. I forgot the await. This is another case where we're, we're going to get a promise back and we have to wait for the data from that promise. So await that. And now we can add that to the widget. So let's just do widget dot add image img. And we'll be sure to put back in our preview, otherwise we'll never see what happened. And there we go, we've got a, we've got a widget that displays XKCD. Other than the nuance of having to deal with promises, I think this is actually relatively simple. Um, and you're really only encumbered by whatever data you can find on the internet. And the more you practice at this, the more you'll, you'll get great ideas. Let's just now add this widget to the desktop and we'll see what it looks like. So I'm back on the desktop, I'm going to long press plus scriptable. This time choose the extra large layout, press add, choose the script. We gave it a nice name this time, which was XKCDYT and we are done. And there it is, I've got the latest XKCD comic on my desktop. You'll notice it's maybe a bit fuzzy. There's a little bit of an exercise here left to anyone who's intrepid enough to figure out how you can look at the size of the actual image and maybe resize it, maybe choose a different widget style. I haven't done that yet because this is fine for my purposes. I wanna do two more things. I wanna make this refresh because by default, the widgets just sort of refresh at the whim of the operating system. And I also want to make it so that when I hit the widget, it actually goes to the XKCD website. So let's do both of those things. So first of all, let's deal with the, the, the refresh aspect of the widget. And I'm gonna get rid of the console.log and we'll do this here. And I want to just refresh this every eight hours. And you should try to do the least frequent refresh you can for your widgets because every refresh is taking power, draining your battery. So it's good practice to try where you can to not refresh all that often. So let's get a, the date for today, which is going to be date.now. And then what we'll do is we'll create a new day and set that in the widget. So we'll do widget dot refresh after date. And we'll say new date is now plus, um, and I want that to be eight hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds times a thousand milliseconds. Um, and if you want to check that, you can do console.log widget dot refresh after date. And that's going to refresh later today. This is I'm doing this on Saturday morning UK time. And you can construct dates in a bunch of different ways in JavaScript. But I think this is the easiest way to think about it. It's like add as many milliseconds as you want to the current date to signal your next refresh date. So now we've handled the refresh, let's think about making it so that when we click on the widget, it does the right thing. And we can do that pretty easily. All we need to do is widget dot uh, URL equals and then the URL we want to go to. But we have to get that URL. And let's think about how we're going to do that. So first of all, what I want to do is come back up here and add in the logging to get the data again and see what in the data might tell us where the actual comic is. And there's actually nothing in here um, that tells you the exact URL of the comic, but I know that this num uh, forms part of the comic URL. So we can actually construct a URL ourselves based on that. And we'll do that here. And we prefix it with HTTPS, www.xkcd.com slash, and then just the num, so plus res uh, num. And that's the, that's the URL of the widget. It doesn't really change anything in the widget itself, but when we now press it inside the uh, desktop, it'll do something. Let me show you that. So I'm back on the desktop. I'm going to press on the widget and yeah, there we go. We're inside XKCD. Now, if it doesn't do that the first time, it might not have refreshed. You might have to take the widget off the desktop and put it back on because we, didn't ha we hadn't set a refresh date when we first put it on the desktop, but eventually it will pick up and you'll be able to press the, the widget and, and, and see the URL. Let's now turn our attention to the widget that displays which of my uh, trash cans is getting collected this week. And I'll show you how I've interacted with the calendar app to do this. So first off, I'm, I'm inside the calendar app and notice that I've created a, a dedicated calendar that just every week shows either blue or gray for which color of, of, of bins being collected. And I'm gonna use that data to power my widget. Okay, great. So let's go back into Scriptable and, and do that. I've created the very basic shell of the widget, so you don't have to watch me do that again. 
We've got a list, list widget. We're presenting it in the preview and we're setting it to the script. I've also pulled in today's date because the date is going to be very important in this widget. And the first thing we need to do is actually think about getting hold of the, uh, the events from the calendar. Let me show you how to do that. So first of all, I need to find the calendar itself. So we'll do const cal equals calendar dot four. Uh, can't remember the name of this, so I'll go into the documentation, calendar, and then I can have a look down here. And I can see there's a calendar method here called four events by title, which gives me a promise of a calendar. So we know what to do with promises, so we'll remember that when we go back. And I know the title of this calendar is bin collection, so it's four events by title, bin collection. And oops, and we know it's a promise, so we have to await for that. Perfect, so we've got the calendar now. So now I've got the calendar, we need to get the events. And to do that, we're going to do const events equals calendar event dot between. This is a method that gives us the events between two dates. And we know we want to start today, which is now. And we're going to have another date called until. And we only want to look in the calendar we found. And you can see all this in the documentation for the between method here. Um, which is fine. And we'll notice it also returns a promise again. So we must use await for that. Great. Now we need to get this until date. I want that to be seven days from now. So let's do const until. And we'll start it at the same date as now. And then we're going to add seven days to it. And we do that by until dot set date. So this is setting the, the day of the month component of the date to uh, now's date, which is get date plus seven. So that's basically adding a week. And this does the right thing by incrementing the month and so forth. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, now we've got the two dates and we can get the events back and we can actually just log those to the console to see them to make sure this is working. Bring up my console. And here you can see that the next event for me is titled gray. That's all I really care about is the title. Um, and I'm gonna use that now to construct the background color and the text and so forth for the actual widget. So let's do that. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of that logging and I'm just going to create const event equals events zero because there are as a list of events that we got returned because there might be multiple events between those two dates and we're only interested in the first one because we know that that calendar only has one event per week. So we're just going to pull the first one out and in most programming languages the first thing is indexed as zero, so events zero. And then using event, we can pull out its title, its date and so forth and now construct the widget. Let's do that. So let's start by saying if event title is blue then we'll do one thing we'll set the background to blue otherwise we'll set the background to gray and we know that widget dot background color is how we do that and we'll use color dot blue and then maybe here we'll just do widget dot background color equals color dot gray oops and we'll press run and see what happens. Oh, nothing happened and I got an error. And that's because color.gray is not a function. And that's because it's spelled the uh, American way, as you might imagine. And we just change that to an A instead and press run. And there we go, we get the gray background, fantastic. So now we've got the background color set, we need to put the date, actual date of the collection on the widget. But I also want to put an icon on there as well. This gives me a chance to show how more complex layouts happen inside the widgets. So let's do that. And the way we do this is by creating what are called kind of layout stacks. So we'll do const stack equals widget .add stack. So now we've got a, a layout stack we can do things in. And you can either lay out these stacks horizontally, so everything you add goes in a line next to each other, or you can do it vertically, so they sort of stack on top of each other. I want the icon and the text to be next to each other. So I'm going to say stack.layout horizontally. Spot correctly. Okay. And now I can just start adding things to the stack. So let's maybe just do stack.add text um, event start date. See what happens. And we get this error expected value of type string, but got value of type date. And what's happening here is um, the text can only display, display things it knows are text or strings in programming terminology. And the start date doesn't, isn't a string in memory, it's a date object, it's got a month and it's got a year and so forth. And we need to convert the date into the string. And at the, at the same time as doing that, we can choose exactly how we're formatting it, so let's do that. So to do this, we're gonna say, we're gonna format the date correctly here. 
and we will start by creating a date formatter. Uh, this is an object that you can get hold of inside Scriptable. I'm going to use a particular built-in style, uh, use short date style. This just gives you month, year and day. And then what we can do is convert this now using our date format. So we can do df.string from event.startDate. And now if I press run, it gives me the date and it gives it me in the short date format as well. Now this is fairly basic. I actually want to make the text bigger and I want to put in the icon. So let's add the icon first. There's an icon pack available on Mac and on iOS called SF Symbols. I'm gonna pull one of those symbols into my widget, render it as an image and then pop it on the canvas for the widget. Let's see how it works. So we'll start by just putting a comment here, add uh, icon. And to get hold of the widget, you might be surprised. We're gonna do const trash, which is the icon I want. I'm gonna use SF symbol dot named trash. And there's an app you can download uh, that gives you all the SF symbols and all their names so you can browse it. Annoyingly, there's no website for this. Don't even get me started. So now we've got this symbol in, in memory and I want to just kind of size it up. So I'm just gonna say trash dot apply font. You can think of these icons as almost like a special font. And we're gonna use a very large font, system font 96 in this case. So now we've got the icon symbol in memory, we need to add it to the widget. You can't add it as text, you have to turn it into an image and then add it as an image. So let me show you how to do that. So we'll do const trash img equals stack dot add image. And we'll use the symbol trash and get its image out. So that's simple, we've added that as, a, as an image and we can render that and see what happens. It looks horrendous. The red icon is massive, it's red, it's on the wrong side, so let's fix all that. So first of all, we can change the, the, the tint of that by say trash image dot tint color equals color dot white, like that. Okay, fantastic. Now I want to make the text bigger and I want to switch the order. Now switching the order is really easy. All we're going to do is take the bit here that does the date formatting, cut it, and put it below this. And because this is where the stack works, that you think of the stack as like another widget canvas, and as you add things to it, they sort of render in order. So now we've said, render the symbol first, render the text second, and we can see that if we render it. Okay, so now I just need to get the spacing right, get the text size right. So let's revisit the text size. So let's get the, we'll call that TXT, and we'll say TXT uh, text color. We need to get that to white as well and txt font, so we'll set that to font, system font again, and we'll maybe just try something more like 32 and see what it looks like. Okay, it's starting to look okay. I just need to get the alignment and the spacing right. So let's do the spacing, and we can do that quite simply by in between these two here, we can do stack.addspacer. So the way to think about this is we add an image, then we add a spacer, and then we add the text, and they'll render in that order horizontally because we said stack lay out horizontally, and the spacer will take up as much space as it possibly can. So it's gonna push the icon and the text to the far edges of the widget. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, it's starting to look good, and I just need to get the text to align uh, vertically now, otherwise it's gonna look silly. And to do that, we'll just come here, after layout horizontally, and we'll do stack.center align content. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm just gonna make that text a little bit bigger actually. So we'll come in here and 36. Yeah, that looks okay. This is nearly done. There's one thing that's missing. If you might remember, we have to set the refresh date and I want to power the refresh date off the actual information that's in the calendar. So this only needs to refresh once a week or exactly on the day that the previous collection happens rather. So let's do that. Let's do set refresh date. And I'm going to do widget dot refresh after date equals uh, event dot end date because we already have that so that's simple enough press play nothing's broken there we go let's add that to our desktop okay fantastic there's the third widget one more widget to go this is the widget that displays all my pie hole information this is an interesting one because it shows some more API examples, but it also shows much more complicated layout. It shows multiple layout stacks playing together. So let's see how that works. Okay, so I've just created the, the basic shell of this already, and um, 
it's very, very similar to what we've already seen. So I'm going to create a request to my private PyHole API, get the JSON for that, construct a widget, set the refresh date, set the background color, depending on whether or not the status of the, the PyHole is enabled. So if it's enabled, it'll be green. If it's disabled, it'll be red. And then present that and we can just see that. So I've got a, a green widget because my PyHole is running. What I want to do now is start adding in the information text, which is very interesting. So I'm going to start by creating a stack, um, which is do widget dot add stack and I want this one to run horizontally and this is going to be my main layout and then inside this I'm going to embed another stack that runs vertically and you'll this is how you can get like a nice feature text and then some smaller text as well we want that to align in the center so we get everything looking nice center align content okay so let's show our first text now so const text equals stack dot add text and I want this to show the ads served today and I can't remember what that comes from so we'll just do the same trick again console.log res to get the data so it is well, ads percentage today that's the one so I'm going to take that from res so press play and I get an error saying expected value of string but got value of type number. This is a similar thing to what we've seen already. So we need to format this quite nicely. And this actually makes a perfect example now to just pull out a little function for formatting percentages because we're going to see quite a few percentages. So I create a function here called um, format percentage. We'll take in the value and we will return a string. So in JavaScript, you can use these backtick style strings. And what that allows you to do is put in a value directly and we'll put percentage after it like that. So now we're gonna say add text format percentage. Make sure we get the closing parentheses and run that. And now we get the percentage like that in the middle, but I don't like the fact that it's got all the decimal places. I want to reduce that down to maybe just two. So what I can do here actually is I can, inside here I can say to fixed and maybe passing the number of decimal places that I want. I did have to look that up on Google. I didn't know that. Um, this is programming. Press play. And there we go. We've got that down to two decimal places. That looks quite nice. I mean, we can we add more data to it and make the color white and so forth, but we're getting there. So before we move on to the other data, let's just finish this one. So text color, color white. And text dot center align for when we move it later on. And what font do we want for this? Something bigger. two like that great okay that looks cool so now what we want to do is add another stack following on from that we'll call that the v stack um, so be wary here i'm doing stack dot add stack dot not widget dot add stack i want to add a new stack inside the main stack and i'm going to make this one vertical and you'll see what this what this looks like when we render this out so v stack dot layout vertically And just as a quick example, I'm going to add a few bits of text to it. To show you what it looks like when you render like this. So now what you're seeing is we've got one widget, we've got one horizontal layout stack. And inside that horizontal layout stack, we've got a piece of text and then another stack, this time a vertical stack, and that's laying out vertically. I'm going to put some spaces in, get some padding and so forth and make this look really nice. So... Step one, let's add in the spacer because we know that looks good when we do that. So now we push those apart, cool. Gonna get rid of these and I'm gonna start displaying the first uh, information I want to display. And if I just show you the log message we've got, I'm gonna take some of the information out of here. I think specifically we'll take uh, domains being blocked and maybe ads blocked today and I'll show you what that looks like. So let's add the value in. So vstack add text, and we want this to be res uh, domains being blocked. Let's see if that works. It doesn't work. We've got the same issue with the number formatting, but we can we can fix that just by doing this kind of in line here. Okay. 
Okay, so we've got a number there. And now I want to put the label for that underneath that. So we'll do vstack.add text, and that is domains being blocked. Okay, fine, that's looking quite nice. We just need to get this formatted now. So let's do, uh, we'll call this uh, value, and we'll call this label, and let's give them some formatting. So I want them both to be white. Okay, so that looks a bit better. I'd like the value to be a bit bigger than the label, so let's set that font 18 maybe. That didn't even work. Let's choose 24 maybe. Okay, that's a bit nicer. Um, and maybe I'll even make this smaller. That's a bit too small. Let's go to 14. Okay, that's looking quite nice. So now we've got one value, value in its label rendering. I want to do the rest. I could just copy and paste this code here and do it again. But what I want to do is extract this as a function and I can reuse it as many times as I want. So we'll do that render uh, detail. And we're going to have V for the value and L for the label. So I'm actually just going to cut this here, pop it here. Just get the indentation right for my sanity. And where it's got the text here, well, we're no longer going to do that. So we'll just replace that by V and we'll replace that by L. And now I can call render detail a few times for the different bits of information I want to render. So we want res domains being blocked. And we'll copy that. And the next one is uh, ads blocked today. Okay, that's quite nice. There are just two more things I want to do. I want to add one more thing to the vertical stack and I want to get the number formatting right because it looks looks awful. So let's fix those. To add one more thing to the stack is really easy. I'm going to copy render detail and I'm going to choose, let's choose uh, DNS queries today, which is another value that's in the data. Okay, so that shows you the value of extracting that function. It's really easy for me to add something new to the widget. But now let's get the number formatting sorted out. So we, to do this, we come here, go to V and change V to v.toLocal string. This is another Google lookup and press play. And now I've got commas in and for whatever is your number formatting in your region, you will get that because that's what the local string means. It means give me the right number formatting for my region. Let's add this to the homepage and see our finished product. So there we go, four widgets created entirely on the iPad, pulling information from the internet, pulling information from local services, pulling information from iOS services like Calendar. Even if you don't know JavaScript, with a little bit of learning, you'll be able to build your own very, very powerful widgets. Hope you found this video useful. If so, please hit like, please hit subscribe. Don't just hit subscribe, maybe hit the bell as well, because there'll be much more content like this coming. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.